Speed Back by RQK. Chapter 6. Working. Queen Chrysalis approached the small ledge and looked down at the cavern floor below. Whoa, I just realized. This is the first time Queen Chrysalis has ever appeared on this show. Several changelings went about their day-to-day -day routines as they attempted to build a reasonable nest. A few of them flew up to the walls and covered them with a sort of slime. Fira still attempted to bathe and sleep in that slime. Others buzzed around each other and gazed in aerial games as they looped and swirled around each other in intricate and intermediate patterns. Small crowds gathered below them, throwing around several wagers on who would come out on top. It made her smile. She couldn't remember the last time she had seen her subjects brimming with so much irritation. It was infectious, actually. Chrysalis heard a long drone touch down behind her. Zynax reports, she commanded. Her trusted lieutenant gave a quick salute. I have the normal news of my queen, he buzzed. The Outer Watch reports that normal patterns from the surrounding wilderness. There was one deer that nearly went out bounds, but we took care of it. Zarhan has also reported back about a possible permanent settlement for the clicks south of here. Excellent. The Queen said without turning her head. Send several scouts down there and send take detailed surveys. I have saved the best news for last of my queens. Word has come from that Twilight Sparkle has died. Christmas actually paused at this point. She dragged it out of hoof across the dirt. What did you say? Twilight Sparkle is dead. Her old enemy, now gone from the world, out of the way. Chrysalis sneered. She then threw her head backwards and laughed. She snickered and snorted and guffawed, and the echoes of each report carried throughout the fast cavern. My queen! Oh! <laughs> the queen cried, wiping away a tear. This is Ritz. Twilight Sparkle gone! I love it! <laughs> she yielded to her laughing fit once more. Sagnac suppressed a smile in order to appear presentable. What do we do in response, my queen? Chrysalis blinked. She placed a hoof onto her chin and thought. Even if Twilight was gone, Shining Armor and Miyamori Cadenza were not. Besides, that debacle had been a somewhat desperate ploy, and they were so close to settling things now. She didn't have to look any further for proof of that than the spaces and somewhat prosperous cavern before her. We will do nothing for now, said so could. Perhaps on a later date I will send those putrid equestrians my regards, but not now. We will continue our current trajectory. Do you have anything else to report? None, my queen. Chrysalis waved him off. As you were then, Lieutenant Zagat. The drone bound, and with a buzz of his wings, he sailed past her, flying off to retire for the day. Crane Chrysalis, for a few moments, went back to watching over her children. The makings of her revenge plot swirled around in her head. It was much too early to tell if anything would come of it, with a twilight sparkle out of the picture. A wide and malevolent grin, one so wide that even her backmost teeth were bared, spread across her features. Better and... <laughs> Sunset glanced down at the page in front of Spike. It frowned at how blank it was. The six of them, Rarity had gone downstairs to answer the door, sat in a circle behind the hourglass. Sunset Shimmer, per her habit, taking a seat right next to the old, but no less clean, fixture. Each of them idly work, busy themselves as they tried to overcome the first obstacle. How do we go about this? As the golden hue of the evening steadily overtook the room, the rumblings in their stomachs and their increasingly following us yawns grew at a teasing frequency. Twilight Sparkle lay near the hourglass in her own time, studying the books she had copied off of Sunset Simmer, this time with greater attention than she had afforded it before. 
Every so often, she would jot down a note or two on some scratched parchment on the side. Dinner! Verity announced as he ascended the stairs. Is served! Several trays and dishes full of delectable delights. Let me tell you behind her. The wettest steam, so thick it could be seen and felt from the distance, waited off the tops of the trays, accompanied by the tender crackle and pop of heated soy. The six on the floor arose with related cries and even few enthusiastic jumps. In rapid succession, they practically stole them away from her, selling the assortment in the middle of the circle, grabbing food just as quickly as they received the plates. Yes, so well! Verity trailed off, taking it back. Hey! Twilight! Pinky said to the ball, We got dinner! That's nice, Pinky. Twilight replied in her current manner. I'm starving! Owl Jack exclaimed, as he piled some mashed potatoes on before taking a seat on the floor. <laughs> it's like a silver party, Suzette mused, taking her own seat. Certainly, um, we don't have a table, Verity said. I mean, certainly it wouldn't be the first time we've eaten on the floor, but we're in a castle and eating on the floor, so so guess. Suzette's eyes, the test of mouse, already full of food, looked up to her. Verity scowled, slapping her hoof against her face as she mumbled. I don't know why standards are so low. <laughs> With a huff, she situated her circle and started to eat as well. But, Twilight, Piggy said, nearly bouncing out the ball, you should eat with us too! No, I have to figure this out, Piggy. Twilight replied off of the lead. We are going to figure this out, darling, Rarity said. So why don't you take a break for a second and come eat with us? Well, Twilight conceded, placing a considering hoof against her chin. I guess I could grab a sandwich from downstairs. There's plenty of spare food in the pantry. Probably Moon Dancer's doing. Rainbow Dancer already fell over. Wait, 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 wait! She began, placing her hoof on the ball so Twilight could hear. Once it become a cat and have it. You mean to tell me that there was food downstairs this whole time? Spike Deadpan. Of course there's food down below. Disgrace anywhere. Twilight gave a loud cackle as he disapproved down the stairs. The Pegasus on the other hook gave for a stink eye. Thanks a lot for the help! Yeah, even I knew where to look, such as said. You know, because I've lived here before. Well, when was any pony going to tell me that? Rainbow Dance cried. Uh, yeah, even I didn't know that! Piggy exclaimed. That would have been useful earlier, Sunset! Rainbow said. Um, sorry? We have food now, though, so let's not worry about it. Apple Jack chided. For the next few minutes, the seven friends along with the eighth inside the ball, who had indeed reappeared with a sandwich in tone, ate in relative silence, although they did make some small talk. All the while enjoying their hot meal, occasionally asking each other to pass the dishes around as he went for seconds. About halfway through the meal, Sunset stood up. So hey, now that we can focus a little better, why don't we go serious at this? Everyone agreed? Everyone nodded affirmatively. Using her magic, Sunset drew upon a similar spell. She created a chalkboard out of thin air and placed it near her own spark. After taking a quick second to take one last bite of green beans, she levitated the chalk towards the bar. So, besides writing off collecting those things Twilight talked about, what else do we have, Spike? Spike looked down at the blank piece of paper in front of him, in front of the back of Sunset. The yellow mare cringed. Okay, well, I think... She looked at the board. I... Don't think we have much other options. I think we have to put the collection back on the table. But there's so many. Fireside squeaked. I don't know if we'd be able to get them all. Rainbow Dash snored. Yeah, there need to be a few hundreds of us to do that. Pinkie Pie gasped. <sighs> Dashy, I thought we agreed not to talk about the mirror pond. I wasn't thinking about the mirror pond. No, but you don't have to talk about the mirror pond. That's the first rule of the mirror pond. Maybe we don't have to, Sunset cut in, showing Pinkie Pie a piercing glare. Maybe we just need the most important ones, or something like that. I don't know. Fireside trailed off uncertainly. Sunset looked at the chocolate towards the board. Well, why don't we pretend we did that for a second, she said, wrote the word collection on the board. And that's really where we get our information from, Then we managed to field quite a few pieces of the book Twilight got from me. She frowned and said, Will! Managed to fill out quite a few pages of the book that I will give to Twilight. 
Pinkie Pie nodded. Yeah, that's true. There's a couple hundred pages at least. The rest of them shrugged. Yeah, I guess, Spike said. Let's see where this goes. So said night as she took the chalk and underlined the word on the board. So now, that must be our task now is to figure out how to acquire these things, Rarity said. Well, Raven Dance here runs it. We don't even know what to do with them when we get them. That's true. You're both right. We'll have to figure those both out. Says it said. Riley eats on the postage stops of four. But dear, Rarity argued, it's not going to do us any good if we aren't able to find them in the first place. Now we'll take while old down some more mashed potatoes. I'll reckon we should start with that plan. What if we had a machine? Piggy Pie suggested. I'll be sure hose is spreading our front legs exactly. Then we can see with science! They'll track them all down! That's what I could do! The rest of them hollered affectionately and shared nods between each other. Except for Spike. Okay, he said. But, so we build this thing. Then, how would it know what to look for? I don't think Twilight would be able to tell us that one, Applesack replied. Rarity nodded as she dug her spoon into her own share of mashed potatoes. That's very true. She knows more about these, what are they called? Stones. She knows more about them than anybody. Spike shrugged before managing to bite down on another gem. Pinkie Pie, meanwhile, did a celebratory backflip in place. But, will we still lose time if we have to take time to build it? Flash I asked. Sunset grinned. I mean... The old Pegasus continued. We don't need as much time as we can get. Four days isn't a lot of time to cross the world, or make the journey back. I'll need time to examine these things, too. A day, maybe. Sunset groaned. So, I guess we really only have three days. Some of these things might be a whole three days, Jenny, even for Rainbow Dash! Rarity cried before flailing herself backwards onto the hard plaster floor. The rainbow main Pegasus looked up from her plate of food, scowling from behind scarab bits of corn stuck to the rim of her lips. It'd be nice if we had a way back here to be whenever we want, Fireside said, then shrugged. Like, um, some way to. To do that tailboard like Twilight did sometimes. Applezack finished. Several eyes turned to the mare standing in front of the chalkboard, trolling her piece of chalk up and about. So said took her time. I need time to develop it. Sorry. All of them fell back into a listless, idly twiling their hooves before taking further bites of their now cooled meals. In short order, they fell into a more relaxed, uninvolved state. Meanwhile, the sun continued to sink lower and lower into the sky. Spike dragged his claws against his arm as he stared into the plate, his brow furrowed and focus expression. Then he gasped, WAIT! I GOT IT! He exclaimed, hopping to his feet in a huff. If that's really the case, then why don't we just get nine days worth of time? Let's have Twilight do it! Why you get a night? Applejack asked, raising an eyebrow. Spike spread his arms triumphantly. I'm saying, let's have Twilight do it! We don't have to wait for the crystal ball, because we're already a few days ahead of Twilight. We could have Twilight find out where the stones that we want are, and we could have her think of a way to get us home. So all we have to worry about is going out and getting them! Oh. For dying psych! Applesack laughed, splatting her plate. <laughs> Why didn't wait like a man earlier? Rarity nodded with an impressed frown. Do we get the old faucet away? We're getting our regular time loop game on! Vicky exclaimed, pumping her hoof in the air. Um, play a path. We don't have a regular time loop game. Applejack replied with a perplexed smile. Give it till this Saturday. Piggy Pie giggled. <laughs> don't worry, not every time he does. Spike walked over to the ball. Let's see if Twilight could do it and go from there. He picked it up before he finished. And hope we don't have to start all over. Twilight flinched. Huh? What? She said, as her quills streaked across the page. Twilight! Spike said, we need some things for you. Okay. We need you to make a machine to find these stones you were talking about. Okay, Spike. Twilight said, darting down on a small map pad. And then when you're done with that, we'll also need to find a way to instantly teleport home by ourselves. Twilight wrote down it as well. Okay, but what do you want it for? Spike looked at the rest of them before he looked back toward Twilight. We're going to put together the spell you have on you. We're really close to having a plan. We just need to know if you can do that. 
Yes, but... Twilight sucked in an uncertain breath. I would need a few days. Yeah, yeah, we know, Spike continued. Then what you'd do, could you hide what you came up with somewhere we could find it? Twilight Sparkle took a moment to flip through some of the pieces in her journal, before she used her magic to grab a book off the top shelf. Twilight idly scanned the cover for a few seconds, humming thoughtfully all the while. Desi grew wide-eyed. Ooh! I see what you're doing! She is going to see world around. She cantered to the hourglass, and after looking up and down, she smirked. Okay, if I succeed in both, I'll put them in there. Go check there now! Sunset, who had been drinking out of her cup at the time, Sully spit out all of it out, then pounded at whatever had gotten lost in her chest. Fireside stood up. Sunset? She asked, voice full of concern. Are you okay? Sunset straightened herself up. Yeah, yeah, Fireside. She said, trying to shoot the Pegasus away. <laughs> it's nothing. I'm okay, thanks. Taking one last deep breath for good measure, she turned her attention to the large hourglass. All the sand still rested at the bottom, so she used her hoof to flip the hourglass over. So... Even though it was twice the size of her, offered no resistance. The soothing feel of the metal frame brought a smile to her face. Just like all times, after a few mesmerizing seconds of watching the sand fall, she used her magic to pry the plate off the top chamber. On an unspoken cue, Rainbow Dash flapped her wings and lifted into the air above the apparatus and reached in. Desi fished out a lacquered box. Small enough to be carried with ease, yet big enough to command a grip. Sunset magically grabbed at a layer taped to the front of the box. An idle glance at its contents revealed another note. I like the faithful note of farewell. The typography was much more even and meticulous. More like hoof writing than she remembered. My friends, hopefully you're reading this just after I told you to search the hourglass. This kit contains everything you'll need to collect the stones. Use it well. Twilight Sparkle. The seven of them shared smiles. Well, all right then. We know she can do it. Applejack said. Jamming her hoof into the air. Nice going, Spike. Rainbow Dad says he touched back down. Randy leaned over. You are fantastic, my Spiky Wacky. She agreed as she nuzzled him on the cheek. As Susan took the box for the Pegasus, she looked at the letter again. Pavero almost couldn't believe it. Susan stood, completely unaware of herself, levitating the plate back onto the top of the apparatus, and instead marveled at the box itself. She had seen better boxes in her day. And really, she couldn't think of a case where a box would be anything spectacular. Yet somehow, the fact that the box even existed, it cost every other aspect of it. Spike made this happen by forcing a time loop. She thought as her body jittered with excitement. This? This is incredible! I have to look more into this stuff! Uh, it was nothing, Spike blessed. Are you kidding? Sunset cried. That was brilliant, Spike! Oh, go on! Sunset excitedly clapped her hooves together before turning her attention on the box. Wait, 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 wait! Sunset gave her noggin a slight rap to put herself back into focus. She looked at the note on the box again and read it over twice. A new thought formed as she threw it in with the other thoughts to see if it would blend. Okay, she concluded. She isn't specific about what's in the box. That's good stuff. The R6 looked at her with questioning expression. The contents of this box are in flux right now. And the moment we open it, the wave function will collapse. We have the chance to collapse it favorably. Sunset Simmer explained. Everyone else beside Pinkie Pie frowned. Sunset could even see the proverbial thought shooting past their heads. Sunset popped her cheeks in embarrassment. I mean, uh, look. Okay, sorry, got carried away there. Basically, the contents of this box... She held the object up in presentation. Can it be anything until we open it? We have the chance to decide what's in the box. So we should think about how many of us are going out there to collect. Immediately, four sets of hooves and a set of claws went up. Sunset wasn't sure if it was because they understood what she said, or they were blindly following the last part. I understood. I should go, Spike argued. I should stay, Fireside whimpered. Rainbow Dash blew some hair out of her face. Um, I don't think that worked out so well. I think all six of us should go. Well, I'll need some help here, Sunset said. 
since I'll have to build something that can read the stones, and probably work with Twilight to figure out the mass he'll need for the spell. So he paused and added, um, a little rusty. Elvisac nodded. Spack, she so said, pointing. You know this place up or damn. I think you'd be a big help here. The dragon mulled it over. This is tr that is true, he said, beating his chest as he pumped up pridefully. And Flareshaw, you can fly, Elvisac pointed out. You'll be able to get to a lot of places most faster. The old pig just sank down in a caring manner. Yes, but I still don't think it's a good idea. Well, I know! Leslie frowned. Go to the furthest reaches of the world, all by myself? I don't think I can do that. <laughs> of course you can, dear! Verity said, giving a hoof over her friend's shoulder. You'll have to face down far worse than a road trip! Piggy Pine laughed, and swung a frolic around Flyer's face neck. Yeah, plus, we'll be doing it too! You can bet you that all of us are going to get through this! Well, um... First I began, but then she sighed. Oh, alright. It is for Twilight, after all. Are we locking this in? Sunset asked, glancing around for approval. The five mares nodded. Twilight? Spike called. Yes, Twilight answered. One last thing. Everyone but Sunset and I are going out. Got it! That tight. Sunset took hold of the box again. So he examined it closely, and then shared a nod with the others. Tentatively, she so opened Twilight's box. Immediately, another carefully lettered greeted her. For the moment, Sunset set that aside so she could see the contents inside. Right below where the letter had been situated were five colored balls the size of gumdrops. Somehow, Twilight's choice of color with each seemed intentional. Scattered underneath those were an assortment of miscellaneous items, each labeled with a string of numbers. Sunset examined each set of numbers. She recognized latitude and longitude immediately, but the third set caught her by surprise. A closer inspection, she recognized them as meters. She figured it had to be death. All sorts of coordinates. Clearing her throat, she turned back to the lair. Dear friends, these five colored balls you see are a new invention. They are... Okay, seriously, I tried writing down this letter five times, and I keep getting carried away with all the technical details, so I'm just going to skip that. This is teleportation gum. You chew on it, and it will instantly transport you home. I've managed to recreate the method Princess Celestia uses to send letters through Spike, and the gum makes sure it doesn't happen until you use it. It only works once, though, so use them wisely. These were pretty difficult to make. I've also listed on the back of this letter several coordinates. I was able to track down 12 of them using the parameters I put into my machine. In addition, you'll find several items you'll need for the places you are going to. Each of them is labeled with their corresponding coordinates. There are extras, so take what you need. Twilight Sparkle. Twilight. Have you ever considered being Q? Spike crossed his arms and laughed nervously. <laughs> I've never caught up material of ponies before. Letters maybe, but not ponies. Rainbow Dash swiftly scooped up the red one. Ha! Not too late to learn hell, right? Well, that's dandy, Applejack said, taking the orange one. Feels good to have a plan. Pinkie Pie did a cartwheel toward the box. Gun that lets us teleport across the world? This will be fun! So he's going, now the blue one. Randy took the purple one. Why she had a staring eye over hers? Not to mention the application these things would have. Well, shows, Elisak replied. Not to ask for anything less for Twilight. Horsey, meanwhile, took the last one, the pink one, and then looked at the other objects in the box. All right, Sunset said. She turned to the chalkboard and jotted down several of the coordinates. Twilight had written on the back of her letter on the board. Let's talk about who's going where. Steam belled every inch away as the train sat ready to depart. Several ponies from all trots of life fled in a relaxed pace. The conductor checked his pocket watch before eyeing the snack bar just inside the station door. Looking at his already chapped lips all the while. And my transfer is in Van Hoover, Meredith said. She rubbed through her saddlebags for the umpteen time. Satisfied that she had everything. She so adjusted her conspicuous sunglasses and gazed out towards the evening sun. We'll have a few hours together, at least, Piggy squealed. This is going to be so exciting! I mean, trains are always exciting. Not as so exciting as I went, Woo! But, I mean, really. We'll be heading over to the docks as soon as you'll leave, Applejack said, switching her own shadow bags a bit more comfortable system on her back. 
Oh, I so wish I could go where you're going. Reggie exclaimed, with sparkles on her eyes. The Rizabers are so, so sophisticated, so grandiose. I don't have enough chances to ride in those. You and Fluttershy are so lucky. Apple's extra shrugged. Meh. First, I meanwhile smiled in return. It's okay, Rarity. At least you and Piggy will be together. Over to the side, Rainbow Dash slipped on a pair of goggles, so they hung from her net before starting some stretches. Her saddlebags had been momentarily set off to the side, as she flapped her wings about and whatever else she could do to warm her muscles up. Smiling at the others, Sunset decided to try it over. <laughs> Getting ready, huh? Yeah! Rainbow Dash replied in a vacant manner. Gonna be a long flight! You sure you could do it? Sunset realized that was a bad question as soon as it left her mouth. Hey! No pony can cross the ocean like me! So he's gone, before starting some hoof touches. A loud whistle bellowed out of the engine on the other end of the platform. Followed by the conductor's authority of ALL ABOUT! Spike looked off at the five of them, but specifically at Rarity and Pinkie Pie. Well, it's time, I guess. Both mares gave each other nods. Man, see you all again in three days! Rarity said, Yep. Apple's at green. Good luck! Be safe. Rarity, with a warm grin on her face, tried over and took him into a solitary embrace. We win! We all win! Without prompting, the other four friends joined in the embrace, sharing giggles and burning well wishes. There was a bliss about them that could not be halved even with a wedge. It happened so fast Sunset could only watch. It had been a hug shared between them. Friends so intricately woven into each other's lives. They had each taken cues from each other that she did not know how to detect. And at that moment, to them, she did not exist. Ever the outlier. Maybe that's how it was. Maybe how things were supposed to be. See you later! Spike called as they broke, went their separate ways. Two mares boarded the train and soon pulled out of the station. One Pegasus took to the sky, sailing toward the horizon long past Ponyville. Two mares set out for the air docks, intent on boring their ship to, towards far-off lands, all sheltered by the radiant hue of the twilight sky. Sunset Simmer and Spike the Dragon stood on the platform, watching their friends fade into the distance. Even as the train routed a corner and disappeared in a mountain, the airship-bound duo disappeared behind a street corner, and the Pegasus became a dot in the sky. They sat as they were compelled to watch. Spike grinned, then let off a few chuckles. He stopped short of bouncing up and down as he looked at Sunset with expectation. Sunset felt some hairs even started to stand on their ends, and she too chuckled. Sharing a nod with each other, they turned back towards the tower with a completely renewed fervor. Somehow, a task spanning an entire globe, the sound of the very face of time, would defy time itself, seemed entirely possible. Sunset smiled at the thought.